And so on today's podcast, we're talking about six attributes of high performing teams that help them stay performing highly over a longer period of time than most. I'll explain. Welcome back to the thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced the best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back, breathe in good oxygen, and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. Hey everyone, it's Jason and welcome back to the Thermostat Podcast, wherever you are and however you're coming to the podcast today. Welcome in. So glad you are here. Uh, We have now, we've hit, uh, we're right around the 250 episode mark. I'm going to have to check exactly, but we're right around 250 episodes. So, so glad you're here, wherever you are, however you're coming to this. So glad you've made it in. If you're one of the folks that have been with us from the very beginning, I'm so glad that this continues to add value to your life, to your work, helps you uh, think about your life, who you're trying to be, and certainly the culture of the the people, the teams, the organization, the family, whatever that may be for you and your life. Uh, I'm so glad this continues to, to add value and help you think about some things. If you are new to the podcast, welcome in. Uh, I hope you'll go back, check out. We have so many different great topics and Uh, micro podcasts about little subjects and things I think that will add value to your life and your work. And uh, and also, I hope you'll go back and listen to we've had so many great guests join me, some voices, thought leaders from around the world. So much great stuff. I hope you will dive in and check it out. My commitment to all of you, whether you're new or old, uh, to the podcast, that is, (laughs) uh, my commitment to you is I want this to be a place that allows you to step back give you some things to engage your mind and heart and think about, again, the type of person you're hoping to be, the type of leader you're hoping to be for the people around you and the culture that you're trying to create with all of the people in your life and work. So, so glad you're here. Uh, If you will do me the quick favor before we dive into today's topic, if you will rate the podcast five stars, whatever platform you're listening on, just hit that five star uh, button. If you'll leave an authentic review, your own words, Whatever you have to say about the podcast and why, hopefully, it it adds value and these messages are important in the world today, uh, that is very helpful to the algorithms and how they find the podcast. So if you rate the podcast, if you leave a review in your own words, and then lastly, anybody who shares the podcast. So, of course, this is a really natural way to do it, uh, whether that's on social media, there are episodes that you like and say, hey, this was great, listen to this, and again, your own authentic words. Or if you're, you know, and or if you're sharing it with the uh, people at work, your team, your colleagues, hey, let's take a listen to this episode and then let's get together and talk about it and how it relates to our team. And however you're doing that, every time you share the podcast with people around you, it spreads. The messages, messages are amplified and uh, that's super helpful because the point is to, to share more uh, important, positive Uh, impactful messages out in the world. So thanks for everybody that takes a moment to do that. So a question, why in major professional sports is it so uncommon that teams win back-to-back championships? Think about it across all major sports, football, basketball, like, you know, every once in a while, again, just in football, we just had the Kansas City Chiefs and and, and their run of, of, of kind of dominance in football. But really, when you scale back and you look at that or you look at the Boston Celtics who just won the NBA championship, they certainly have won many championships over many years. But why is it that some is it so difficult for teams that have won a championship to win it the very next year? So think about it. They end the year at the top of the mountain. They're the best in their sport, but then rarely are they able to stay there the next year. And why is this? And so I've asked this question to many teams and organizations recently and leaders that I work with 
um, to, you know, the, the teams and, and companies and organizations that I work with to help support their own leadership development and the culture that they're trying to create. And so I asked them these questions and, and some answers that I got. Why is it why is it that the best teams at the end of one year aren't always the then the team that stays and is the best team the next year? And the answers that you get from people are things like complacency. Complacency sets in. Normal human behavior takes over, and so it's just hard to stay focused, to stay disciplined. Another answer you'll hear is that, well, the competition adjusts. So those teams that you just beat the one year, they start to study the way that you were playing, and they start to adjust their personnel and the style of play and all that. And so the standards, new standards for the next season are created. Then you hear people talk about team chemistry and the fact that good players are then poached from other teams that say, hey, come over here, we'll pay you more money. And so some of that mindset might creep in that might be, huh, am I more, you know, am I thinking about me or am I thinking about we? And of course, we know this to be true, not just in sports teams, but in 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 companies and organizations that when you're good at what you do, there will be other companies or organizations that come to you and say, hey, why don't you come over here and and do it over here? And so there's all these reasons. And, and lastly, the, you know, uh, many different answers that people give. But one of the last answers that people give to that, a why don't teams, you know, win back to back championships more often is the last answer they give is because it's just hard. It's very difficult. And that many great players, teams and coaches out there. There's so many great players, there's so many great teams, there's so many great coaches that it's just hard to sustain yourself as a high-performing team that stays performing highly over time. It's very difficult to do. And so on today's podcast, we're talking about six attributes of high-performing teams that help them stay performing highly over a longer period of time than most. I'll explain. But before we dive into today's topic, let's pause, take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I want to share with you the great excitement for this year's Thermostat Cultures live event on Friday, November 8th, 2024. As you know, this event that I've hosted over the last seven years has been an inspiring day of development focused on authentic leadership and culture. I've been joined by powerful voices like Howard Bihar, former president of Starbucks, Shane Battier, two-time NBA champion, Jenny Britton, founder of Jenny's Ice Cream, Jessica Jackley, co-founder of Kiva, Cameron Mitchell from Cameron Mitchell Restaurants, Greg Oden, and on and on and on. This year, Thermostat Cultures Live will be a hybrid event. There will be a powerful VIP in-person experience with limited seating in Columbus, Ohio, and a virtual experience for those wanting to participate remotely. I am so excited about this year's lineup of voices joining me, such as New York Times best-selling author of Atomic Habits, James Clear, and founder of The Theory of Enchantment, Chloe Valdery. So please visit thermostatculturelive.com or jasonvbarger.com to learn more. And I hope you'll help share the word and join these conversations that are the currency for change. Rally your team, reserve your seats, thermostatculturelive.com. So we've established that it is very difficult to keep your team performing at a high level over a longer period of time. Sometimes it's easy to be good for small stretches or maybe even a year at a time. But for those teams, those organizations, those companies that that have sustained success, then there's many things that often you know get in the way for those that, that have a hard time sustaining the success. Things that I already named like complacency, team chemistry and culture challenges, competition, adjust to your style of play. And it's just damn hard to stay on top. And so it takes incredible focus and discipline and an ability to pull together rather than to drift apart. And so on today's episode, I'm highlighting six attributes of high-performing teams 
that are able to continue to per- perform highly over time. That doesn't mean that they'll always win the championship the very next year or whatever that equivalent is for your team organization. It doesn't mean you'll be the best in your industry year over year forever. But what it, what are some of the key attributes as you look at you study this? If you look at research, if you look at at a, a, examples around the world. What is it that those teams, those organizations, those companies, those leaders, those ones that stay high performing over a longer period of time, what are some of the common attributes that help them sustain that level of success over time? And so I'm going to share some examples of teams and organizations along the way just to spark our imagination and our minds and our hearts. But what what are some of those attributes that help these teams perform highly over time. So let's go. Six attributes of high performing teams. The first one, and you won't be surprised by this. You've heard me talk about this on other on other podcasts. But the first attribute is you study, you research and you look at examples. One of the first things that comes to, to the surface is an attribute of high performing teams that perform highly over time is trust. The more you study leadership and team culture dynamics, you see that trust is a foundational element to every successful relationship, individual relationship, every successful team, and every organization. And oftentimes when relationships, teams, organizations break up, it's because there's been a fracture in that level of trust. So trust becomes this foundational attribute and element of successful teams and high-performing people and organizations. And so you've heard my series that I've done on trust in the past, and if you haven't, I encourage you to go back and listen to the four-part series I did on this, this topic of trust. But trust has always been important, but it's even more critical now that we're in such a low-trusting environment in our world across teams and organizations and industries. Gallup, again, recently, they came out with a new study that said only 23% of employees say they trust their leadership and the future direction of their organization. So we're in this massive, low-trusting environment. Only 23% of employees say they trust their leadership. And so the, the, you've heard me talk about the, the, the massive opportunity in front of all of us as humans, let alone leaders and organizations, is to create cultures where we raise the level of trust. And that will also help lead us to be high performing and higher performing teams. So let me give an example. And I'll use the Navy SEALs as an example. The, the Navy SEALs are a unit that gets celebrated all the time for being a high-performing team. Many people look to them to try to pick up on some of these attributes and elements of, of how do you develop a high-performing te- team where they come together and the, the, you know, the mission of the group is greater than individual pursuits. And the very first foundational element that the Navy SEALs talk about is trust. You have to be able to trust your other SEALs and you yourself have to be trustworthy. And that that doesn't happen overnight. That the Navy SEALs work very hard to build these level of trust and put them into experiences and, and challenges where they have to cultivate those relationships and build the level of trust. There, there's a saying in the seal, within the Navy SEALs that says when crisis hits, that you don't, you quote, you don't raise to the level of your expectations you fall to the level of your training. You don't raise to the level of your expectations. You fall to the level of your training. And so what that means is when crisis, when challenges, when obstacles hit, our level of training and that level of trust that we've built and that, le- that culture that we're, we're, we're clear on and how we want to lead and how the culture we're trying to create, we will fall to the level of that training and that intentionality around our attributes of leadership and culture. And so have you put in the work to build that level of trust and training for how you're going to lead and the culture that you're committed to? But trust is one of those foundational attributes 
of high-performing teams. The second attribute that I'll focus on for today, that as you study and look at these high-performing teams that perform highly over time, is you'll see engaged leadership. You'll see it across these all these different examples, engaged leaders, where the leaders aren't just sitting in some high position or role or title, but they are engaged with their people and not only connecting them to the mission and the vision of where they're trying to go as an organization, but are actively listening and developing and engaged with people throughout the organization. And that's a common attribute you'll see in, on, in high performing teams. I remember my good friend and mentor, Howard Bihar, who you've heard me talk about before, uh, recalling in in his early days uh, um, and years as president of Starbucks. You know, these this is when Starbucks was growing up and it grew from 15 stores to 15,000 around the world and, and continued to grow. And during his time there and this great rise at Starbucks, their leaders were actively engaged And what they referred to as these kind of listening campaigns with their people in different regions around the world, they'd go in and they'd they'd host these these, uh, you know, gatherings of people to listen and, and to have these forums where people could ask questions and they could share ideas and all that. But the leaders were engaged and actively listening. They were listening. They were asking. They were proactively engaging with their people to see what what the frontline folks and people throughout the organization were experiencing and what they thought they needed to grow the operations in ways that also cared for their people. And so I'll just share quickly two examples of outcomes that came from this kind of engaged leadership who listened to their people. You know, Starbucks began offering benefits to hourly employees well before other organizations even considered that that's something that you could do. This, th- that they realized that their people needed more benefits. These hourly workers needed more benefits and that that was also going to be in a competitive advantage they would have of attracting, atta- attracting talent. And so this helped them grow a loyal and caring employee base and was an, you know and helped them continue to grow. And all of that came from listening to their people and realizing their, their employees needed greater support. Another tangible example that came from this was when one of their store managers, her name was Dina, came up with an idea that she thought would be successful. And so she shared it with Howard and Howard helped then as an engaged leader listen and then also shared it with other leaders. And they started to play with this idea and they began to then start a trial. But Dina's idea went on to become what is known as the Frappuccino that one, at one point in their business became 20% of the Starbucks business. All that came from somebody at the front lines that saw an opportunity and the engaged leaders were willing to listen. And Starbucks, you know, over the years is certainly much like many organization and company, no, none of which are perfect. They've had their own challenges over the years. But this kind of engaged leadership during those years when they were climbing to global prominence is one of the reasons why they stayed so high performing during those pivotal years of massive growth that they had in their company. The third attribute I'll talk about uh, for today is defined roles and goals. A fundamental of every team and every organization, and again, as you study and you look at research and 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 examples again, you start to realize, do people clearly understand their role in the organization and how their goals line up with the overall strategy or vision for the future. People want to make the connection. Not only do I clearly know my own role and my goals for my job, but how do my role, how does my role and my goals, how does it align with the future and the vision of what we're trying to create as a greater organization? And when you feel connected to that, you tend to be a higher performing person, let alone team and organization. I'll share another example, uh, you know, trying to give you many different examples on this pod. But during Salesforce, you know, Salesforce, uh, their rise to, you know, as Salesforce was rising as this big company, global company, and, and they rose to, 
to at one point to being named one of the top 25 place, best places to work in the world and for many years. Uh, and, and I know since then they've had other challenges, and, and, and but they've also had many celebrations and, and had many years now where they are a known entity. But during those years of this, again, meteoric kind of rise to being named one of the top 25 best places to work at that point, I know things may be different depending on your opinion, but during that pine, from the, from the t- during those times and those years, from the, the very top of the organization to the front line, every person and every team had what they called or what they referred to as their V2 mom, V2 mom, which stood for vision, values, methods, obstacles, and measures. And every single person throughout the company, let alone every team and department, but every single person wrote their own V2 mom, which meant what was the vision for their particular role? What were the values and how how they showed up to the role? What were the methods they were going to use to get, you know, to accomplish their goals? And what were the obstacles that might get in the way? And then how might they measure that along the way to see that they're making progress? And all of this was connected to where the company as a whole was trying to go. And this clearly defined roles and goals. A fourth thing I'll point out as an attribute of high-performing teams that perform highly over time is clear and courageous conversations. You've heard me talk about the importance of how we communicate. You've heard me share the quote that the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Oftentimes in our own heads, we think we've communicated something, and yet the illusion is we haven't fully communicated. The message hasn't landed or hasn't been received. And so teams and organizations that don't assume that they've communicated, that means they are courageous enough to continue to talk about messages and things that are most important and also identify what are those things that we need to be talking about that we currently aren't talking about. And those are the conversations and the clear and courageous conversations that help move them beyond the status quo and help move them forward. You've heard me talk about that the best leaders, teams, and organizations, they make things mentionable so that they can become more manageable. So an attribute is you look at these high-performing teams, they have clear communication, but they also have the ability to have courageous conversations to, to say, hey, there's some things we're, we're not talking about that proactively, we probably ought to have this on our radar. We probably ought to be talking about it. And let's have that courageous conversation in alignment with where it is that we're trying to go. The fifth attribute that I'll share for today is, as you look at these high-performing teams over time, is the, the, the fact that they navigate obstacles with grit and resiliency. And we've established this. Again, staying high performing over many years is very challenging. Not only challenging just as human beings because our mindset and complacency and, you know, so many distractions and the discipline that it requires to stay high performing, but we know market conditions shift. We know competition changes. We know all of the other things. The environment around us can shift. And so it's very hard to stay high performing over many years. It's very challenging. So obstacles and challenges do arise, but yet how we navigate our way through them is everything. And as you look at these teams and these leaders and organizations that seem to navigate the obstacles more gracefully, it's not that they, you know, they don't have the obstacles. It's they learn, they practice over time how to handle hard things better. To have the grit and the resiliency to, to even though something gets challenging, how is it that we can continue to, to stay together and breathe oxygen into themselves individually and collectively to continue to identify, okay, what's the next step that we need to take? And we can't pan- panic. We can't run the other direction. We can't focus only on the challenge. We've got to focus on the solution. And so they, get, they find ways to breathe oxygen into each other and also into the journey. And they're really clear on, hold on, in, in order to navigate our way through this, let's identify the next goal. Might be a smaller goal. But what, what, what do we need to do next to keep us moving forward and help us 
to, to navigate our way through these obstacles or challenges we might be facing. And we can't get too fixated down the, too far down the road. Let's make sure that we just identify what's the, what are the next moves we have to, to make on the next stretch of road so that we can navigate our way through these challenges. And then the sixth attribute, again, these aren't the only attributes, of course, of high-performing teams, but six that we're identifying for today of teams that are not only high-performing but then sustain that kind of performance highly over time. The sixth attribute that all that comes to the surface as you study and look at all this stuff is continuous learning and development and reimagining continuous learning and development and reimagining after a team has been successful it's easy again to relax and get complacent but when you you study the best leaders teams and organizations and or you've watched or experienced them you see that they they are always challenging themselves to learn more to learn differently to build upon their expertise and their habits they practice what jim collins in his book built to last says about the best companies over a hundred year stretch did where he talks about that they preserved the core and stimulated progress and what he meant by that is he studied these these companies that lasted over a hundred year period where other very similar companies and products and service and marketplace conditions folded what was it about those ones that were built to last and at the core of that, where they were able to do what he call, refers to as preserving the core and stimulating progress, which means they preserve the core, the very best of what they've done in the past, the mission, the purpose. Why are we doing this? Let's not lose the core of why we exist and why we came together in the first place and those lessons we learned in the past. But we can't be stuck in the past. At the same time, the other side of that that we have to do at the same time is always be stimulating progress. Always be asking the question of how could we do this differently and better and, and what is this going to mean for our future? And so Google is a good example of this, this reimagining as well, because their teams at Google, no matter what uh, you know, team you're on or product, the, you, the, whatever it is, they, they got in the habit of having this ethic within all their teams of constantly challenging themselves to reimagine the future. What are we trying to recreate next? High performing teams have an ethic of continuous learning and development and a, a desire to stimulate progress by by reimagining the future that they're trying to create. So as always, let me leave you with a few questions to ponder as we're thinking about this and for your own life, for your team, your organization, or however you're coming to the podcast today. What attribute could your team or organization focus on to build upon past performance? How could you build trust with your people next? And what's your plan to do that? What are the courageous conversations that are needed to help stimulate progress next? I hope today's episode got you thinking in many ways. If a deeper dive into any of these subjects is helpful to you, or if you have questions about the podcast, or if we can help in any way with developing your leaders, your culture, or that clarity around mission, vision, and values, I hope you'll reach out to us. Email is info at jasonvbarger.com, info at jasonvbarger.com, and uh, you can track us down at jasonvbarger.com or, or however is, is best for you, and we'll, uh, we'll try to connect and see how we can possibly help or continue to design content to to best meet your needs and where you are lastly i hope you'll go back listen to some of the past episodes so much great stuff out there again dive through it i'm sure there are topics that will engage your mind and heart and cheers to all of us for the road ahead the future of leadership is you is me is us we are in positions to to raise that level of trust throughout our organizations and with the people to care for people and to create cultures that people want to be a part of and are more than just a paycheck. And so uh, thanks to, to everybody out there listening, and I hope you'll continue to, uh, to listen and to share this, to rate the podcast, review the podcast, and share it with, with everybody that, that you think would benefit from these messages. Step back. Remember be a thermostat, and breathe good oxygen. Thank you for listening to today's podcast, and I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. 
As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using. And share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does, in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to you and your organization, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we are all ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you, is me, is us. Be a thermostat.